And hello and welcome to Union Street Lanes in Holbrook, Massachusetts. My name is Greg Guyar for Candlepin Bowling Network, and this is the Friday Night Pro League between teams Woburn 1 and Union Street Lanes. Currently, these teams come in second and third in the standings. Woburn 1 in second, and Team Union Street in third. First up on your right opposite sides of the graphic, the way it works out, Sean Baker on lane number eight, and John Sappy, captain of Union Street Lanes on lane number seven. Baker starts off with a head pin hit. Two goes, it's gonna roll back into the four. Not quite a strike. Zappy likewise with a four eight. A good hit. Baker converts and he's off and running. Zappy gets on the wood, but it spins just around the four pin. And it'll be the third ball for nine or ten. There's the pin completed. That's a ten for John Zappi. The format of the Friday Night Pro League week after week is three string total pinfall, two match points, which will be tracked at the top of your screen for each string one, and two match points for the total pinfall, and any ties result in those points being split. Baker score in the first is 10 plus that ball you saw there, six, so 16 in the first. Zabby is mixed up everything, including the five pins of the six stands. Yes, Baker's got back to back against the four horsemen. And Zappy responds in kind, and he's got his first mark. Now Jeff Surrett on your right and Chris Jones on your left. Red starts, starts off to the left. Jones on the head pin. Leaves Dan Castle's nemesis, four, five, and seven. Still three to get, one, three, ten. Jones is trying, trying to get that wood to spin. Just gets into the left two pieces of wood. So Red, not bad, everything except the head pin. Jones will take a ten. A nine, excuse me. Jeff Surrett comes into this week with an average of 122.6. Jones with an average of 114.3. Triangle number three for Jeff Surrett. Jones splits two, four, six. Yes, that converts. Three marks and a four for Team Woburn 1 to start out. Good quality shot on the split there. That's happened to Chris twice to start out. This time, three balls all on the object pin, and it will be 10. Third for each of the teams now, Jonathan Boudreaux for Team Woburn 1 and Craig Holbrook for Union Street Lanes. Jonathan Boudreaux comes in with an average of 118.3. Craig Holbrook just about 117. Do it, do it later. Finish. Finish on. 
You see the lead at the top of your screen as well. Six pins in the early going for Team Woburn one. Holbrook, however, is down to two pins. Boudreau, nice bit on the half Worcester. Five, eight, ten. Holbrook connects. Boudreau takes nine. Folks, this is Candlepin Bowling Network. My name is Greg Guillar, and it's a pleasure to bring you this and many other professional and other bowling matches all across New England and perhaps into Canada as well. It should be nice to come up to Moncton, I'll tell you that much. Either way, if you want to stay in the know on all our coverage, please remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube for all of the best of the best. Holbrook spare fill is three, and he has 13 through one. Just wide of the head pin for Boudreaux. Boudreaux is 10, challenging Holbrook to match that. Seven pins still to get. And he's washed out a bunch, and he gets eight. So in the end, the three slot bowlers end up just about level there. And that brings up now Eric Pelletier and Chris Harris. Start off with three pins. Obviously, a lot of overlap between Ruben One and Team Lucky Strike Lanes. Runners up in last year's World, or uh, this year's World Championship, I mean to say. And with shots like Eric Pelletier's just there, you see why. Eight for Harris. You hear me keeping my voice down. We are the only ones here, so I don't want to be too loud for the bowlers to overhear me too much. But open bowling will be in here in just a moment here in Holbrook, Massachusetts. And they'll be causing enough ruckus soon enough. Here's the spare fill. Eric gets half the rack. That's five. Harris has a chance to put up a mark of his own. He's got the three, five, nine, ten. if I... Read that correctly. Trying to get those parallel pins to go and the 10 pin foils. Harris. Chancing in a couple of pins here, though. He does. 10 versus 8 in favor of Chris Harris. I'll bring up their stats at the next chance I get. But first, our anchor bowlers, Captain Dave Barber and John Winchell. John Winchell comes in with an average of 114. Dave Barber, 122.8. He has the absolute highest away average as well, 125. And that's all road matches and a few select home matches as well, as predetermined in the schedule. One, six, eight, ten. Just gets the two on the left side. So nine versus eight somehow. Winchell got that wood, but it wasn't frozen to the wood in front. Ten pin gap so far, mostly from the two mark advantage. Whooper one has. Armour's got four, six, seven, ten. Well, the wood's more convincing on the right side than the left. 
Virgil crossed over on this one. Kingpin stands. Fivepin got tapped by the rolling wood. It will stay put. Here comes Bumper trying to spin it over. It was too flat against the pins, unfortunately, so he'll be open. No mark, I mean to say. That's a spare, John Winchell. On the board of box two. You see the scores here as I have them. It is paper scoring, so there's a slight risk I'll make a few mathematical errors, but I will do my best to keep the score as accurate as possible. And I will check in as frequently as I can. Two marks to two, that's confirmed. Both leadoff bowlers on Marg. Zappy's filling his well. 29 for the opening pair. Baker! Not seven. No, that's going to tip, though. Hmm. Seven, nine. That's a Star Trek character. No, just wide of the curtain. Right side into the curtain. There's wood in the middle for Baker, and it collects. Angled nicely, played nicely, and then it is three marks in a row. On the third ball. Zappy collects 10. So now two marks to one. So you see it's eight pins and ball in hand for Woburn One. In this first string of three here in Holbrook, Massachusetts. Back on the head pin, the five, the nickel and dime. Smearfield again for Baker. It's a good one. It's all of them. Strike on a spare. And a mark through start in the first four. Baker covers rock. There's one available. Can Zappy spin this over? Hmm. Would have required a ridiculous end-to-end -end send over, and I'm not sure even that would have worked. <laughs> Accurate every ball, Zappy gets 10. Before folks, I forget folks, I really ought to mention the statistics for each of them. Sean Baker, current average, 119. And John Zappi, 106. Chris Jones, spread eagle, plus a nine. This is a spare fill, oh boy. Just the one pin, I'm afraid. Playing less into more, it's still mixing. That got Union Street's attention. Still a sizable advantage for Whoopin' One despite that. Nine versus eight. At any time now or after, make sure to also check out the sunny side at Riverwalk Lanes. If you haven't already caught it live by now, of course, we're premiering on YouTube afterwards. Since we don't have wireless here. That pin has been wobbling for some time for Chris Jones. The five pin stands there. Yep, on the cap, that'll go. And after good putting, pinning, Chris is on the board. Jeff Surrett responds in kind, and he's got his second mark. Two 
Brings back up Jonathan Boudreau and Craig Holbrook. Two marks to two. That's a monster hit by Craig Holbrook and it decks all ten. Four and two. Three, four, seven. Boudreau takes the prude route to the left side. Darn near got all three, I suppose. Would have been a lot to ask for that splashback action, but he didn't come that far off. Only lost the two pins through three frames. Holbrook had a spare in the first, and now a strike in the third. This fill. Slice of the head pin quite thin, but it sits the plank down quite nicely in front of the 3-6-10, at least I think. Boudreau, oh boy. Splits there. The wood looks a little too far back, I'm afraid. Well, that's my opinion. I might be wrong, actually. Yep, this turns and it's spare on strike. The wood did indeed spin back. Needs a few here. Wants this cut over. Gets the... Taking half the pins is seldom a bad out. You see the gap shrinking a little bit here. Well, we're going strike spare, and now it's a bit of a different game. Eric Pelletier and Chris Harris now. Pelletier, that's spare five to start us off. That busts up for Chris, two, four, seven. Pelletier just left it out a little bit to the left. Five pins remain. Harris just shades over to the left. Chris' current average is 122.2. Don't easily have the statistics here for uh, Eric Pelletier in front of me. Bear with me, folks. There we go, 113.8. Oh, 7.10. Extra pins broke up for Pelletier, but I'm not sure that's good news, and that wood in the middle looks pretty darn vertical. Harris 2 pinner just wide. Had a couple of makeable ones. Three of the top five road averages as the end of season average awards are determined are here in this matchup today. Peltier tried to slice that middle wood but it just spun out on him at the last moment. Took a hard right turn. Like it missed its exit on 95. 10 to 10. Dave Barber, as I mentioned, is one of those top averages. He's the very tippity top average, 125.06 on the road. Jeff Serrett is second, and Chris Harris is fourth. Other averages, Danny Harris in third, 122.4, and Tim Douglas with around 122. Winchell, spare fill. Headpin's good, slightly thin, I suppose. Six and a decent chance for another. And you see the lead switch on your screen, but that gets decked in a hurry. Dave Barber makes his opening statement. Check mark. Ooh, on the object pin full. Oh 
Someone's decided to play a subwoofer outside here. Ridiculous. <laughs> On the object pin every single step of the way for Winchell. That'll be eight. So you see the one pin gap on your screen here. Currently three unfilled marks to two though, so still a slight advantage for Woburn one, but not as much. Seeing the strike fill will tell the tale. First Winchell. Accurate again. This time he's got the three, five, nine, ten. Barber's strike fill. Looks powerful. Diamond, I believe. I'm wrong, folks. It's a triangle. Triangle number two. This one gets away. Barber increases the strike fill to nine. Now you see the advantage of that extra mark swing back in Woodburn's favor. Winchell completes ten and ten. Let me see if I can confirm scores real quick. See the start of Baker's strike fill there. Now he's got it to the head pin. There we go, Sparrow strike. That was double wood there. And it is a five mark opening half for Sean Baker. Just confirming scores real quick while I have a chance. Right back, right back. Come on, seven. Still has that one 19 box bolstering him just fine, keeping him over par. Pending is exactly level right now. pretty good now what have we do we have five six here my goodness <laughs> and after a 13 box Baker darn near got away with it for the first time he will not have a mark in this string Winchell at 43 that was the only error he was only so one extra pin to Union Street other than that all scores are confirmed So we'll take the spare smudge away. That's 10 for Baker. It's nine for Zappy. And there we go. We're caught up. Now we come back to the second slot where both bowlers are on a mark at this time. Just the Red had one in the last fill. This one's a ton better. There's the other nine. Jones really put a lot of hook into that one. Seven pins. Two, seven, ten. Union Street, Union Street doesn't hate the look of that one. So Red picks it up and goes back to back. Wood looks wired for the corners here. Yes, the spinning Wood took out the ten. And Jones goes back to back. All right, on top again. Sure, gets three on the 
Fifth box fill. This is the head pin, but gets five and a makeable one. There's an eight pin hiding back there as well. Oh, just fall on the head pin. So red pins out for nine. Eight it is. There's an eight pin hiding back there as well. Here's Boudreaux, big hit strike. Jonathan Boudreaux's first mark is a big one. That's five, three and two. Well, we're trying to slice just wide of the object pin. A little more to the left, who knows? Prudent route to the left side. That's close. Called a good nine. Just kept contact with the lane. Boudreau double strike. Not there. Now I can hit the correct button in my excitement. After four markless boxes, but good pinning. Boudreau explodes. Holbrook, that's a good hit too. 5-7, thanks for nothing. Again, trying for a skinny slice. Cuts it just to the right of the seven. Three marks in pinning well at 75 through six. So we'll wait to see the outcome of that. Eric Pelletier and Chris Harris now. You see the power of the double strike on your screen. You see that advantage mounting. Here's Pelletier. Now then, pins continue to drop here. 310. Good rolling action from the pins. All right, there you go. Come on, Big time washout for Chris Harris. 1-3. In search of his first mark. Yes, that goes. There we go. Pelletier's first and Chris Harris is second. Currently 13 marks to eight advantage for Woburn one overall in the match. Two marks to one in Woburn's favor. Pelletier gets six. Harris, big time hit. Nineteen in the fifth. Take the spare smudges away. The wood's a little bit out in front, and it spins out on Harris. Ten versus nine, you see the scores on your screen. Brings up the anchors. In the fifth and sixth, Dave Barber and John Winchell. Folks, we got a lot of exciting coverage coming up. If it hasn't yet happened as I record this episode, Sunday, Pro Series Knockout Singles coverage from Lita Lanes live on Facebook and YouTube. We look forward to seeing you then. And then, yes, we will be back for Easter Classic coverage 
obviously from Lita Lanes as well. And we're looking forward to seeing you that Easter Sunday. 20 string extravaganza, years long tradition. And a record setting field. It might possibly sell it for the first time in history. Well, it wasn't quite angled for Barber. Good two, good two. 56 half for Barber. Winchell picks another pin, that's nine. Hit the wrong button there. Right back. That's better. Right back. Pinning still just three apart on the third ball. Barber deals. Hat pin hits a good one. Five eight. Barber had that strike of the third. Nothing worse than nine apart from that. Winchell deals in. Pins continue to tumble. 7-8, but Wood's available. Yes, this goes. Barber getting a mark every third box. Winchell collects. Give you a look at everything as it stands. You see what's coming up when the third slot bowlers come up. Currently a massive advantage for Uber One, Uber One in this first early going. Thanks to part two, that double strike, but still a lot of bowling to go here and still two strings after this. John's happy. Four horsemen right side. Baker who had five marks all in the first half. He's gonna really have to work for this one here. Two, four, six, ten. Does that plank in front offer more of a surface area? And does it actually help? We'll see. Gabby curls it just in front of the head pin. Getting a lot else. Gets it out there. Ten pin unmoved despite the cut shot All right back now right back Get back on the heaven Zappy 9 and Baker 10 Baker's brought up his century already Still 3 to play Some start this is Baker's high triple is 417. There's only 400 so far in this campaign. Zappy will have a big chance to get the four pin. Baker suddenly not getting the time of day from these pins, although 3, 6, 7, 10. Well, maybe he's getting a passing favor. We'll see. I'm not convinced that wood has turned enough. Yes! Zappy has a second mark. Cuts it. Yeah, I was worried that Wood was going to stymie the action more than anything. Too bad. Don't take my word for it, though. End to end. That's 10. 117. Zappy will have a chance to build up there, but first we turn to Jeff Surrett and Chris Jones. Most 400s, if my statistics are not mistaken so far in this Friday Night Pro League campaign, Joe Smith of First Place Academy 2 with four of them. His highest triple being 428. It's not a bad 9-10 at all, I don't think. Bit of a boneyard in front there for Surratt. 
Jones has the horseman. Seems like that head pin's proving stubborn on that leave across the board today. This spins in for Surrett, and he's got another mark. That's his fourth mark in seven boxes. There the head pin will remain. Tough to hit those tiny toothpicks from a distance. Jones on the eighth. Bob Caleri, I presume. Sarette spare fill. All right, another chance for some more circus tricks, possibly. Jones again washing out all the pins in the back there, so pinning's not a problem there. Has this wood turned enough for Sarette? Yes, it has. Three and one converts. Make it five marks. Jones completes the 10. <laughs> 16 marks to 10. Boomer one is also gaining five pence in hand. You see it on your screen. You see what's coming up here. Surratt's got five marks, but only 19 bonus pins and one more to fill. He's wishing there was a little more here. Now the moment we've been waiting for, that's head pin split. Thwarted in his chance to go three in a row. Does the wood spin over? Not quite. And there you see it when the dust settles, 20 over par. Ulbrick a very good 10 there. Boudreaux matches and there you see it. Two unfilled marks apiece for the team, so that big, big advantage you see there is the decider right now. Holbrook trying to get something going. He's not having a bad string at all. Hmm, I'm not sure that three pin tipping was good news for Boudreaux. These pins roll a bit here at Union Street Lanes. Yes, this goes. Spare for Holbrook. Had pin just into the 10 for Boudreaux. So Union Street's starting to claw back a bit of an advantage here. And Holbrook with the chance to go into the 120s. Leading the way for his team. Boudreau 9, he's not far off the 120's pace. Eric Pelletier and Chris Harris. That's pretty good. Triangle number two. And triangle six for Eric Pelletier. Harris has the one mark, Pelletier is two. Triangle's gone! Harris spares, oh, they're just right, I suppose. And again, it's Mark versus not in Union Street's favor. This will be nine. Folks, you're looking to two of the top three teams in the Friday Night Pro League. We hope you're enjoying it. If you do like it, please like the video on YouTube by hitting that little thumbs up button. Greatly appreciate the support. And let these bowlers know you like what you're liking. And you like what you're watching. Harris, unfortunately, just got a half Worcester on that fill. Oh, 
Let's hear a second look at this. He's gone left side of the wood and plays the 3 7 10 perfectly. Pins collected perfectly for Chris Harris. Only leaving the three pins and six open frames. Brings up the anchors, Captain Dave Barber and John Winchell. These teams are separated by one game in the standings. This match easily has implications for it. Kaleri Lee for Winchell, that's on his spare. And a six pin drop for Barber. Just around that head pin again, those horsemen and such have been doing wonders, but the three and one converts for Barber. He's got back to back. Winchell. Sit on one here. Good pinning pace for each of them. 17 pins lost and 21 unmarked frames for Woburn. 21 pins lost and 27 unmarked frames for Union Street. It's only four different there. And doing better than losing a pin a box. Winchell. Uh, Buzz saws that three pin and leaves this annoying leave. For Barber. Leaves the Chester Cove special. One, two, four, six, eight, ten. <laughs> Winchell wants to try this left wood. It spins in front of the ten pin and doesn't take it. Just wide of the head pin. Barber will need to collect a bunch on the third ball. Winchell challenges for a 10. Yes. Barber gets an 8. We'll check the scores. That's a good response there to keep the frame results within a few. scores as quickly as possible but first take a look at Baker oh spread eagle too bad he's been off to such a hot start and now he can't buy a break all of a sudden still hasn't left a pin standing by the way just FYI triangle five that's a good good leave and drops on the spare I've seen Baker do magic before but he doesn't make it this time No, the wood just spins out, unfortunately. Chance to pick up a few pins, though. Still picks up two. Suddenly overcredited Winchell somehow. Baker a chance for that sixth mark. Zappi's got on the head pin. Yes, he carved it up. 2 4. All scores confirmed otherwise. Baker will go 11. Look at the score on your screen. Ah, and gone. Zappy's third spare. 
One bonus ball each to close out the first string. The scores you see on your screen plus this one bonus ball in hand. Baker lost it out, but still a great string, 137 by my count. Zappi's got to bounce off the wall. The roller won't take it, but he still takes out six. And John Zappi concludes with 116. Winding down the first of three strings here. This time we've got a diamond, but there is one nestled in the middle there, which will make this a little simpler for Surat. Right. Should have put that on the screen so you see it there. Pretty decent fill. A triangle should go as a diamond. Oh dear. You saw what got out just a little bit to the left there. This is going to be this classic pinning problem that just about full Worcester. Surratt gets nine. It's so cut to he cut that head pin this way and that. So Surratt picks four pins up in the process. Chance to pin out 120 here. Wood gets it. Oh, yes. Good, bad, better in the order. Had the 3 6 10, then the 6 dropped. With wood in the middle of the 3 10. And now it's just a 10 pin. Soret deals his backup ball, and it just hits the curtain to the left. Mm, tough to get to that back layer of pins from there. Surrett does pin out and gets his 120. Bring it up. All right, bring it up. Three and seven, I'm afraid to say it'll be 99, but still two strings to go after this. You see that heavy advantage of Woburn one side. You got Baker with 137, Jeff Surrett with 120. Boudreaux after that double. Apologies, folks, my recording faltered partway through there. There's head pin for Holbrook, 6 7 10. So both bowlers in the vicinity of 120. And there's nine. Oprah gets seven. And what do you know, both bowlers finish with 118. Now back to the only remaining unfilled mark here. Eric Pelletier, lane number eight. 19 marks to 13 in Woburn's favor. Arguably 20 if you double up. Boudreaux strike. How's that for a strike, though? There is just no starting to get the rhythm. That's going to be something to keep an eye on in string number two. They have that every day. No, once a month they do the Well, it's here at five on that spare fill. So now I know when I'm going to have a great Oh, yeah. 
and six. So immediately a four pin gain for Union Street to try and pare down this margin. Again, you see the gap, 50 pins, but the strike is going to subtract it away. And then just a few more marks, maybe five marks or so. And Union Street could be right back in it. It'll take a lot of doing, but never say never. Pelletier's got a full rack of 10 now. Here it comes. Five, seven, eight, ten. Lost this strike the worst way, and the five pin stares back. Unless this wood decides to roll all the way back in the other direction, that's the only way, but I think it's going to sooner choose the channel. Goodbye. Already significant strike fill. They're conferring on this wood right here. There's a piece more or less vertical pointing at the 8-pin. Bit horizontal in front of the 510. Plays on the cap. Does the 8 tip into the 7? My goodness. What an effort that was. That's gone. Spare on strike. Well, it's still a well-earned 9 out of that. Belletier finishes 106. Harris now with a chance to build a 120 string. Put the spare smudge on screen, you see it there. And the fill is high! It's perfect! And that's how Harris finishes. And that's how you see the margin comes back down to earth. Woman one still heavy favorites in this string, but. Now this match is a whole lot closer. Brings up the anchors as we conclude the first of three. Spread eagle for Barber. Barber has had one strike and two spares to this point. That pin, look at lane seven go, my goodness. Now Winchell powers them all down. And this again will be marking against Knot. Good pinning, Barber making sure, that's eight. Winchell could theoretically take the string away, but he needs to strike now. And if Barber powers down a mark against this 5 8 with no wood, with wood, excuse me. He does get a piece of the head pin, just a bit too thin, but we'll be pinning out his strike fill against the check mark. Oh, Wood betrays Barber! Surprise, surprise! Against the check mark. Yes, Winchell converts. Spare on strike. And we'll put Barber's 10 on here. A nice 112 finish. And you see the margin creeping down. And what was 50 just a few minutes ago has suddenly nosedived. Two marks from Harris, two marks from Winchell, ninth and 10th. And this fill is high, and it's a single-digit match by my count. We'll confirm the scores and put them on your screen now. Is that 
in me that cracks. Like my sister, she cracks every time she sweats out. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Nice finish. Oh, look at John Zappi and Sean Baker get ready for the second string. Starting away now. Now they're the ultimate washout for Sean Baker. Baker picks it up. That's a spare in the first. Zappy is eight. Might as well put the scoreboard on here for you guys. 137, 120, 118, 106, 112. Woburn Warren got off to a there flying start, but it's how you finish as well, and Woburn does pick up the match okay. points. Now then, shades of that thrilling Pro Series victory. Baker washes out seven. Champion of the three-man random draw. That was against Dave Barber, incidentally. Zappi doesn't pick up the spare here. The one nine goes. Those are two tricky pins to get. All scores confirmed. It was a nine pin victory for Woburn in string number one. Zappi picks up the 10th pin. That was some serious Microsoft Excel gore. There you see the scores. 26 plays 18, Chris Jones. Nine and 10 tip, five stays, one, three, five, six. Threat juts out two fingers, but actually is one, two, four, 10. Ooh. I think the wood in the channel jammed up Jones's chances. Otherwise, it might have come off the wall and taken the six. Zaret, gone. Both Wilbur and one bowler starting with marks. Jones takes nine. The previous string. Sean Baker had one strike and five spares. Jeff Surrett had five spares. This is his sixth. John Zappi had three spares, and Chris Jones had two spares. He's got a chance here. Pins continue to topple, and once again, we've got the nine pin mix. One, three, four, seven, nine. On the spare. Ooh. That's gone. Another bowler got the head pin in the first two frames, but Surrett's got two marks to none. And that's the difference right now. Jones will look to dial in on the head pin when he gets up next. And here's Jonathan Boudreaux and Craig Holbrook. Both taking entirely different routes to their 118 each. Go get it. 
Four horsemen. Boudreaux decks the plate with 10 pins again. His third strike already. A team lucky strike. It was a stacked team in the World Championships in their runner-up campaign to Team Academy Lanes. How stacked? Boudreaux is on the bench. Holbrook against the horseman. He can't solve it either. Sounds like me getting that pin. <laughs> Smooth, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're teasing Jeff Sritz pin retrieval abilities. They'll tease each other for anything. Well, I know what happened the last time Boudreaux got a strike. Uh -uh. Don't move the scoreboard, Gregory. Our fine friends here watching Candlepin Bowling Network need to see it. Can he do it again? Yes, he can! Do you believe it? Two... <laughs> Everyone heard me say that, of course. Two double strikes in the first two strings. Jonathan Boudreau, four strikes, zero spares, who cares? Oh, we're trying to jump the pins, what a shot, seven, eight, ten. Spare it up. Brings up Chris Harris and Eric Pelletier. Chris Harris with that strong finish, he and John Winchell. That brought this match within a few. Mark Flurry again, Wilburn one starting hot. Harris starts, well, powerfully, but the nickel and dime stands. Anyway, Pelletier, two, eight, 10. And that looks pretty flat in terms of wood. Can Harris slice this? Not bad, but no mark. Not the best you can do with that. Hard to turn the wood. Chris Harris's quality 10 picks up a pin. Chris Harris got on the head pin again. He's got the king pin alone this time. Now, 4 5 7, and this time there is no side sweeper wood. It is truly a Dan Castle leave with just that stupid horizontal piece doing nothing. Harris gets it. Hold your breath, but it goes. Bells here off the right side. That wasn't a bad try at all. And hey, he'll be happy with the nines anyway. Considering what he started those frames with. Not a John Winchell and Dave Barber. Hopefully you like the new layout of the scoreboard here. You see the colors are slightly redone. Everything relating to pinfall is all one color. Hopefully it makes sense. Feedback appreciated in the comments below. Winchell. Crunch. Although, that's not a spread eagle. That's a much better than that. Not sure which one I take better. Barbara's got 410. Which leaf would you rather shoot at? And is that wood? There's wood behind the four pin. We'll see if it's playable here. Winchell can't make the slice. Barbara, play the right side wood. Doesn't go. 
Wanted that ball deflection left, of course. That's a very good out by John Winchell. Turn seven into ten. Matching the ten by Dave Barber. Two, seven, ten. Supposedly all that for a few measly pins, but you never know, it might matter. Only five apart here in the pinning department. So 24 marks to 19, but Woburn has not Woburn does have that double strike, though. Now then, here's another strike. Dave Barber delivers Woburn 1's seventh strike this match. Winchell's on the third ball now. We'll try and show us how to run down these horsemen. That's how you do it. Ten again. Have a look for yourself. Look at all the smudges on your screen. Look at the margin opening up for Woburn 1 in the early going once again. There is a tracker for match margin as well, but I've decided not to turn that on until string number three, just so you don't get, I don't know, data overload. John Baker. 139. Zappies found the head pin, they mix and they all go down. Strike a pole loser all of a sudden. So deja vu, Baker says. That's dead. All right, so still, now it's three marks to three right now, so it's a true. Is it a true 24 pin advantage? Not really. Boudreaux's got that. Effectively, an extra strike, so it's really four marks to three right now. Ring, ring, you've got a Kaleri leave. Zappy on a strike! Five and seven. What was wrong with that? Didn't cross over. Maybe thin, I suppose. Didn't even look that bad. That's all in. Strike fill for Zappy. Can he make this cut shot? Yes, he can! There was wood back there. Zappy played it perfectly. And picks up two pins on the spot. Bring up the two seated bowlers, the two slotted bowlers, Jeff Surrett, on a spare, and Chris Jones. We've got the Easter Classic coming up. Jeff Surrett, of course, has won more of those titles than any other. Seven. Seven for Jones, but he's got a shot. Something dropped. It was an extra pin for Chris Jones. He's got the 1 3. Everybody on Woburn is now discussing this shot. This is why we bowl to 1 3rd. 6 7 10. <laughs> this is Sunday. We'll see. There's three pieces of wood on the plate, including one in front of the 6 10. Left is diagonally aimed at the seven. Selects the far right side and nothing goes over to the seven. Just wide. Jones still looking for a head pin hit. Uh, 
And it is. So you saw someone get there. Great team atmosphere here in the street lanes. As of both these bowlers, but you saw it there on your screen just now. Head pin hit now for Jones. Four, six, seven, ten. Seven, ten. Oh, brilliant. Played on the intersection of the wood. Jones trying to bounce this wood over to the right side with nothing doing. I'll have it be noted that Woburn did not conference before that spare make by Jeff Surratt. Jones a quality 10. All right. Take a look at the on-screen scoreboard. I know we had that recording glitch, but this is not a glitch now. Boudreaux's found the head pin again. Six pin unmoved. On a spare, 2-4, that is all on a spare, and Boudreaux gets spare on strike. Holbrook spares as well, and I will try desperately to keep up with all these marks. There we go, that should be right. Good for pace of play initiatives. We had a 7.30 start this evening in the hopes that everyone would be able to spend a little more time this evening, even with these increased daylight hours. Seems like tonight everyone's responding to it pretty well. Boudreaux is now getting a look at... The horseman. Oh, head pin. Holbrook got three, came back and gets it. You don't need to remove the spare smudge. You see it on your screen. That's correct. A for Boudreaux. 73 through four. 29 box in the first and another spare bolstering his score early. And he's already 33 over par. Harris had a tough four boxes, but has suddenly been getting marks with some regularity here. Eric Pelletier hit three marks. Pelletier gets the head pin this time. Five is all that's left. Harris, that's head pin. Super duper full. The perfectly accurate shot. This goes for Pelletier. He's made his kingpin. Pretty well pinned, considering you only start with four in that spot. Current mark situation. Three marks to two. So Wilburn one again, getting an early advantage. Let's see how much of an advantage. That's pretty good. And a nice lead for Pelletier. Harris. Triangle number two. Six and nine. Just a nine. Harris against the triangle, got it. Got to the other side of the triangle. With his right to left ball. Goes beautifully. Eltier will stick with nine. 
Pinning gap is crunched down to about two, so you see the marks really making the difference here. Really 30 to 24 when you consider Boudreaux's doubles. Anchors away, Dave Barber, John Winchell. Barber's got the head pin too, on a strike 10 pin. Winchell carves in there, three, four, six. Yep, spare on strike. This is not a recording. Winchell trying to slice. Got it off the wall, but it's shot behind it. Three pin. Now the three and four really do look adjacent. I think that pin is bridging the gap perfectly. Don't make a liar out of me. Or just make it directly. I like that idea better. 10, 10, 10 for Winchell. On the spare two. Now then. Pin just shot all the way around and in front of the five pin, leaving the five, eight, ten. Pin that turns the wood. Oh, not bad. Five and dime made, but. It's a quality 10. And John Winchell is 40 through 4. How about that? I'll confirm scores. Spare feels happy. It's a good one. Another kingpin leave and another 19 box. Baker. His turn at the 3 4 6. in a row for John Zappi. Six minute cuts. All right, same progression, three, four now. Nope. Oh, it's the little trick shots that can make a big difference. All scores confirmed as you see it. Zappy drops five. Has the outpost leave. That's a powerful looking hit for Baker, but it's not the five, seven, eight. There's one in the middle of this outpost leave. Plays on the right side of it. Even if he got on the pocket, I'm not at all sure if that pin wasn't going to interfere with the action. What's way in front now for Baker, and he's got it. <laughs> Spins to win. And a 10 out. Zappy works it out. Red and Jones now. Two marks to two, so the lead on your screen is a true one. Come on up! 
Jones, now then. Pins continue to drop. Two pin might have worsened the lead, but it's 1-4. Zarek got in there with that backup ball. That's a pocket shot. And that is a 19. Zarek had some low fills earlier. That's a good shot by Jones. To my point, Zarek's fills are going up, up, up. This hits the channel wood. Stays up in a chance for 9 or 10. So not to be. Street with a chance to turn the tide a little bit. We've seen how quickly they can do it. Six. And Surrett's got the horseman now. We'll add that spare fill in. You see how that cuts into the lead? Checkmark does not go for Chris Jones. There's wood between the six and the ten. Surrett shoves the head pin. And again, the four horsemen just aren't going for a spare today, it seems. Nine versus eight in Surrett's favor. Bidding still within two. Holbrook on a spare. That gets a bucket load. Holbrook drops eight on his mark. Holbrook, I neglected to mention, is on three marks in a row. And there the streak stops. One, two, seven, eight. Eight pins wobbling, won't drop. There it is. Boudreau eight. Back to back eights. One mark apiece. Unfilled. And Rook's got three and one. One nine. We've seen those pins go, albeit not with the specific leave. Just running off the sidewall. That's one way. Holbrook having to work for every pin on this box. Yes, gone. Driving it straight back the other way. And Boudreaux working up a huge, huge string. Pelletier and Harris. Thirty-three effective marks to twenty-six in Wilburn One's favor. Again, counting the double strikes twice. Harris, that was a nice smooth delivery all the way down. And the pins respond in kind. Now let's hear, look at this all collapse. Eight pin stands. So we're seeing a few nine pin wash out here. The Pins do respond, and it's marks apiece. So again, three marks to one, so the margin has shrunk to 16, but Wilburn does have the chance to expand the margin. Don't take that for granted, though. That's 
Bellitz here dumps down on the plate. That's a spare strike. We've seen a bunch of strike spares. And this mark as well. Cashing everything up. There we go. Pelletier strike smudge. That's correct as you see it there. Dave Barber and John Winchell. Highest singles last week, Mike McIntosh dealt to 156, and Nick Norcross dealt to 152. We'll get it. Did Barber get that all? Mm. Not quite, four pin. At 400s, Nick Cephalotto, 404. Steven Body, 405. And then both from Sunnyside, Aaron St. Cyr, 418. And Nick Norcross, 431. Barber with a spare. His third mark. That's 10. And it is. It's five of a kind for John Winchell, 50 half. Winchell's really going to have to work for this next 10. Barber carves in and gets a five. Four nine for this remaining ten. Ooh, both are going to have to work for these pins. Let's see if Winchell can get at least nine out of this. Slice the head pin. All right, eight it is. Sometimes the the pins just act up on you. That's what we wanted. <laughs> Nobody had a perfect string last. Sean Baker came closest but had a seven in the ninth. Here's a spare fill. Filling his eighth mark with a seven. Well, the only difference between these ten castle leaves is that Baker had that wood, but it was just too vertical. When you hit that hand pin and it just buzz saws the two pin, or the three pin, I suppose, and just tips it annoyingly in front. It's very difficult to make that wood realistically work. Zappi was trying to spin the right tip of the wood in. Baker immediately did not like that out of his hand. Right, Zappi spins the wood in and collects 10. Now the pinning advantage is tipped in Union Street's favor by three. See the margin of the match a whole lot more than that for the time being. Zappi's crossed all the way over on this one. Lands flat on the three pin for the half Worcester. A lot of full head pin hits on the second ball across the board. 
Same story for Zappi, and the third ball will be required for each. When you have those back pins missing, it's tougher to get it after your head pin contact. Baker pins out well. Zappi gets the two pin, yes. Four becomes eight. Second time we've seen that, turning four into eight. Little moments can make a big difference. Surrett versus Jones. Three out so far. Two, five, eight. Jones dials in. Thanks for nothing, spread eagle. Suddenly these pins are getting hard to come by. The importance of the third balls are starting to get amplified. Three, four, six, seven, ten for Surratt. Can he slice the pin over? Well, he got the three on the right side. Yeah, three more for Jones. Spread Eagle had an extra eight pin. I apologize, folks. Miss called the leave. I don't think they can go back and call a foul now, right? I don't know. If, can they do that in basketball? I know they can in the NBA. I'm not sure about foul. Got in the pocket, 10 pin stands. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly, it's clearly, off, it's clearly off the other There are two pieces of wood there. Six, no, not the seven. Six pin stands, wood's gonna roll up, but mostly out of the way, it looks like. There's two pieces of wood there for Surrett. Hits the front wood and it deflects the ball away. Joe's try. Didn't get the wood in front either. Otherwise, might have had that tip in. Collects the 10. Jones picks up a pin. Nine pins was the margin of string number one. Remember, it was about a margin of 50 at one point, so a lot can happen. Though as it stands right now, Wuburn 1 has a two marks to one advantage. Boudreaux you see here, and then both of the four position bowlers, Pelletier and Harris, opposed. Boudreaux on a spare. Ah, uh, come on up! Still building a monster string here. Right, go get it, Johnny. Yes, and he's broken into 140 now. Holbrook leaves a trapezoid, I suppose. Nope. Four pin drops. Boudreaux collects. Twenty nine, twenty, sixteen. This is Boudreaux's start. Eight, eight, nineteen spare. Try the right tip of the wood is Holbrook after a conference. Yeah, I mean, they had to. I mean, it went off the other guy. They had a quality 10 for Holbrook. 100% foul, but you can't. <laughs> Boudreaux starting off with a 118 after a double strike. Now he's got a double strike, including a 29, the first one. And five marks. Boudreaux on a spare fill. And another seven on top. Holbrook got the head pin. Two, four, ten. What's in the middle 
I'm not convinced it's helping the shot terribly. Boudreaux cuts it over, and that's the sort of string he's having. Albrecht could just a whisker away, needed a fine cut on that pin. Yeah. Yeah. Eight box here. Looking forward to seeing Jonathan Boudreaux back. See how much higher this can go. Boudreaux's definitely on 400 pace if this keeps up. Bell is here on a strike. Washed out a bunch. One, two. Harris just spun it back in there, catching a tiny piece of the head pin. Pretty please, nine pin will you drop? Guess not. Holbrook's, Holbrook's pointing out that right side piece of wood that might be able to help. Elitier spare on strike. All the way over. Stumbled into the cap. Boy. I was eight on that mark. He went for both of the pins and got nothing. So eight it is. Elitier got three on the spare. That's a huge hit for Harris. And a strike in his fifth mark of the string. Elitier back on it. Good sticks. He'll want the 6 10. Elitier had gone spare, strike, spare. Caps off with a 10 in the 8th. Two match points for Woburn, one in the first string. Probable favorite to take string number two as well. But remember, they only won the first string by nine, so easy to make that up. Plus, if they close the gap here, we could have a closer match than that. Barber. Dave leaves four, six, seven, and ten. John Winchell who had all tens in his first half. Has the one, three, six, and a chance to do more than that. Good second ball for Barber. Can Winchell bury this in one, three? Just away. Wood came back but didn't end first so it didn't roll. Yep, that'll be 10. Six, eight, ten. Winchell now with only one pin to get has to wait for this rolling wood. Dodges it and gets it. Sixth ten in seven boxes. This is still quite remarkable. Barber's got the one three seven ten, and if the pin setter doesn't take, we'll just use the magic of editing, folks. But instead of full plate of ten pins, so we carry on. It's one two six seven eight ten. Barber just made a huge bounce back spare. His fourth mark of the string. Mitchell, it's not too bad for him, but unfortunately the head pin flies straight back. Applauds himself for hitting the active. Take 
Yeah, uh, 10 pin and Winchell gets an 8. See the scores here. What am I doing? I don't need to confirm the scores. I... I've got photos. Zappy leaves triangle number three. Baker, okay, that's the, the lily, five, seven, ten. Yep, this goes. Good spare shooting from Zappy. Baker accurate again. Object every single ball, that's nine. He buries it. What do you know? Deja vu. Five, seven, ten. Deja vu. Four horsemen. Good string work for Zappy. So this would be something. Still a string in the 120s, no matter what. Horsemen go. Baker shows us how it's done. Seven it is, 124 for John Zappi by my count. Three marks to one, so Woburn won heavy favorites here, though remember that Chris Harris and John Winchell had strong finishes in the ninth and tenth, and that's what enabled them to cut the margin down in string number one. First Baker's last ball, gets five, and concludes with 112. Folks, once again, this is Greg Guyarm for Candlepin Bowling Network. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking time to watch this match today. If you like what you see, please like the video by hitting the thumbs up button on YouTube. And make sure to subscribe as well. 1,500 of you subscribed already. You guys are amazing. Make sure to also hit the bell icon if you want to be a super fan of our channel and really be in the know. Because we got a lot of great bowling content for you. Either way, thank you so much for your support just by watching. Jones has the plank. He got the pin directly. Mark it up. What's well, going to roll across for Surrett here? It's not going to come backwards, though, unfortunately. Good sticks, though. Nope, nine. Jeff hasn't found a whole lot of ten boxes, interestingly, but he's got... Eight marks overall. Now Jonathan Boudreau. Nope. Excuse me. Tenth box. Jones with a monster hit. Four pin. All that remains. All on the spare. So that turned around on it. He got the head pin. This would have turned something strange, though. Almost vertical at this point. Jones converts. Third mark, back to back. Saran so had to play that wood, but it was angled funny, and it just didn't go into the eight.
Had he played on the right side, that vertical piece would have certainly stopped up the momentum. It's not thrilled to the fact he's not getting tense, but hey, 113. Jones going 11, here's the last ball. He's got a six at a 114. <laughs> two string totals, by the way, so far. Sean Baker, 249. Jeff Sirk, 233. And then on the other side, John Zappi, 240. And Chris Jones, 213. And now Jonathan Boudreau and Craig Holbrook. Holbrook's waiting for the 10 pin to come up. Greg Holbrook had three marks in a row in the second through fourth. Boudreau is six marks, two sets of three marks, including two strikes to start the string. He's got the head pin. He's got a working ball again. Well, it's near the 10 pin, and now it almost rolled against it, but it won't, so... Hey, that's off the wall. Holbrook made that annoying leave. Now that stumbles into the woods. Abudra will not make this. Still nine. That'll stay nine. 145 with a box to go. If Boudreaux pins out, he will have 273 and require just 127 to get the 400. Just made it up. Oh, did you? <laughs> Holbrook has eight marks today. Here's this fill. He's got the head pin. Yikes. Five, six, seven, ten. One pin chopped out. Just as well he didn't make that spare, I suppose. So put that six on Holbrook's side. Oh, buries it. This time the pin action, not as much. Boudreaux completes the ten. And Jonathan Boudreau, 155. <laughs> Brings up Eric Pelletier and Chris Harris. 41 marks to 33 in Wuburn One's favor. Still time, remember, Harris is on a strike here and he went made a deep run on the... Ninth and tenth, until the eleventh. He won't won't get the headpin on the first one. That would have been down no matter what. Now let's hear a good hit. Eight, nine. The wood is disappearing. Harris completes the strike fill with seven. Let it be known that Eric asked for advice on that shot. What are they going to do to help? That's a not bad cut. It's nine. Versus eight. Still giving it a cut to see if it would possibly go. Five. Horseman in the eight. Three pins topple for Eric. Pinning is three apart. 
That's not a bad slice, eh? The horseman went. Haven't seen that all day. Eight pin stands. Well, it's here now. That piece of wood off the wall got stopped up slightly. It came in from the right, otherwise it would have had a chance to take out that six. Harris picks ten. So does Pelletier. Chris Harris 131 and Eric Pelletier 126. John Winchell 76 has included six 10 boxes. And two eights. Dave Barber, one strike, three spares, including this one. He's on right now. Now that head pin found for Barber, that brings up the century. Three, six, seven. Does he get it off the wall? Just rolls in front of the seven. Three pins at varying depths, and it didn't. It did not go. Winchell's still trying for the ten. He's having a pretty good pinning string, so right, come why on, not? Have one here. Right He's fine. Barber gets ten. Last two game total for the team right now is for Team Union Street is Chris Harris with 259. Zappy's got 240. That's 2 a 10 for Winchell. Barber explodes the pins. Four stays put. Plays on the left side in helicopter. 210 wasn't bad. The barber gets a mark versus not. He's got a chance to go over 120 now. He is at 120, in fact. Mitchell gets nine. A no mark 94. Quite a few quality tens in there. On 20 plus this, it gets away, but washes out into the 3-6. And six for 126. We'll check the scores. It's clear who won the string, but I'll check the final results, and then we'll go to the third of three strings. Third string underway, half Worcester for Sean Baker. He's got the one six nine ten. Yeah. Confirmed and Zappy starts with the skull. Baker's got seven. Hang on, folks. I'll get my bearings. Okay. 
Seven on Zappies, Phil. Not a bad bit at the Chester Cove there, but it didn't go. What a great slice. Zappy goes back to back. Maybe he gets nine. All the scores are confirmed. I've entered them in a slightly strange order, so that's why the scoreboard is out of order for the time being. Just a 10 pin left for Jeff Surratt. Now, Jones caught the back piece of wood, and that's why the head pin went out. Scorpion tail forward. I think I'm just about there with the scoreboard, folks. Thank you for your patience. And a nine. Okay, do this. Ta da! There we go. 247 for Surratt. Jones, whoops. Four seven goes. So Rhett's got his ninth mark. He had eight in the previous string. Baker had nine marks in the previous two. Boudreau eight, although with two double strikes, so that's ten really. Pelly's here seven. Barber eight marks. And Zappi had nine marks. Jones five. Actually, Zabby had seven marks. He's got nine now. Holbrook eight, Harris nine, and Winchell four. Jonathan Boudreau on the 273. He's got the head pin. Four tips. Here we go again. All right, work it out. Come on. Let's put you there. That is Boudreaux's fifth strike today to go with his four spares. Number two match points on the line for each string. So you see the 4 nothing margin for Woburn at the very tippity top of the scoreboard. Holbert gets two pins. How about three? <laughs> you never know. We start from zero in the third string. Union Street Lanes, Holbrook, Massachusetts. And here for the Friday Night Pro League. Auburn one visiting these Union Street Lanes. And Holbrook did Boudreau. Oh, my. You can't ever expect it, can you? But, you, but what a huge hit that was. That's four pins for Holbrook. Not happy with this. There it is. Spare on strike. Maybe 400 will be easy. Not a bad bid at all by Holbrook, leaving the 4 8. Bid again. 10 10. Eric 
Pelletier coming in with a 232. Chris Harris, 259. You saw ball clearances there a moment ago. Just saving time for you with a fast forward. Chris Pelletier. Had been hit. Six stands. You see the exact level margin here, although there is a mark in hand for Wuber. That's in the string. Yikes. Spread eagle plus an eight. Single pin connects. Harris trying to throw less into more. You see the angle he threw it at. If it connects with the three pin, it possibly slices that in. Now we'll go where more pins are for the third ball and connects with three more to get seven. Half the pins on the third ball. Bell's here. Washed out into the three six. Just five. Big hit, Harris. Six seven. And Danny Harris again with some of the highest averages of the Friday Night Pro League right now. 6 7, the wood connects. Two pins remaining for Pelletier. He gets the back one, and that's nine. 24 for the opening pair. Dave Barber on 238. John Winchell on 217. Come on, Johnny. Only lost six pins in that second string, despite no marks. Any single spare would have brought him into triple digits. Barber. 10 pin takes out. 136. Is it just me or did Winchell take a faster step up on his approach there? Maybe trying to generate some extra power. 3 9 is not the worst thing in the world. Dave Barber just got a spare. That's a spare. Winchell breaks out of the funk. All right, so again, Never say never. You see the matches quite a ways apart, but their game has begun. Still a chance to take away two match points for the home team. What's going to roll back here? Does it take an extra? Not quite. But it does stay up for the resulting spare shot. That's eight. Two and eight. The old double wood situation. Barber close, four pin doesn't go. Just to the right. Barber caroms that piece of wood around, so that'll be nine. And we'll give you a look at all this. So two marks to two indeed, so much thinner margins than this. Pending just about level as well in the string and the match overall, that is. Zappy with a spare fill. It comes forward. The three horsemen of sorts. And another 17. Baker. Looking for something here. One, four, seven, nine, ten.
Yeah, we got the scorpion tail kick on the wood, but the one didn't go. Baker gets those spare leaves, uh, those spare tries really down lane. Trying to generate a little bit extra on it. Nine and nine. One pin different in the pinning on this string so far. Into the three six here. Not the best leave ever, but what's in front of the eight pin? Baker full on the head pin. Suddenly having a tough time getting pins here. Once upon a time, it seemed like seven was exploding for strike after strike. That's how, that's how probability can go sometimes. It gets streaky at key moments. One side down, one to go for Baker. And Baker shades it over to the right just to make sure he gets enough pins. He gets nine out of that. Spare fill, you see it swings in Union Street's favor. Current mark advantage is two to one, so Woburn one, Woburn one. That's what I call the initiative here. That's a monster hit for Jones. Nine pin stays. Two pieces of wood there. Red pocket shot strike. His first strike, and that's on a spare. Double wood to flex away. That's the problem sometimes, too much of a good thing. And ten. Twenty-eight with no marks. In the string. Jones has five. Marks in the match. Kaliri right side. Strike Phil Surrett. Triangle three stands. No, the three pin drops. Hmm. Well, it'll drop on the strike, but. This wood looks pretty bizarre. Oh, that looked buried in there for Jones, but it didn't go. Again stymied on the second ball. High on the wood. It caromed back. Did not take it out. Nine on the strike for Surrett. That's a great cut shot for Jones again. Bowling better in the string than the score indicates. So I can't buy a 10 box for the life of him, but he's bowling pretty well. If he pinned out here, Jeff Surratt would have 350 for the triple. Naboudro. Who came oh so close to his third double strike? He has two. <laughs> he requires 17 more bonus pins to be in 400 territory. Boudreaux does. Holbrook! Five pin tapped! Boudreaux crossed over! Five pin! Wood curls around it. That's all in the spare. That goes. Holbrook tapped the wood. All right, load and up. Boudreaux connects now. as well. 
I'm keeping up. There's the spare smudges. Boom, boom. Three marks in a row for Boudreaux. He's got 11 or 13 again, depending on how you count it. Holbrook, nine marks, one strike and eight spares. Craig Holbrook, buried, another five pin. Boudreaux crossed over, 10 pin, stands. Well, I guess we're doing this 19 at a time. He is there, folks. Boudreaux can now pin out 400. Holbrook does not make his nut. Yes, Boudreaux has it. And now he can build a cushion towards that 400. Right, Holbrook doesn't get a third time either. So nine it is. There's no need to. Chris Harris on a mark as he stands up here. Eric Pelletier had one already. Harris. Diamond left side. That's six on the mark. Pelletier. A 10 wood in front, which you'll have to use. through the middle of the diamond. A 10. Eric yelled hurry at it. He was hoping it would get a little more to the left side, perhaps. Not a bad try at that. Harris nine. And Pelletier nine. Big margin for Woburn 1. Even if Union Street had all of the 76 pins back that they've left on the plate, they would not have caught it. At least not at this time. Harris's try here. Just too far outside. Pelletier. Overthrown after the underthrow on the second ball last time. See here. Harris, that's buried in there. Four down, six to go for Pelletier. Facing a nine box of Chris Harris. Full on the head pin. All right, half the pins. It will be seven. <laughs> Brings up Dave Barber and John Winchell. Again, drops the eight and back, has a chance here. Barra's got the three, four, six, and seven. Winchell, no. No mark for either. See the gap opening up for Woburn 1 again. Nobody for Union Street on the mark, so... 9 versus 8. It's a girly advantage by an extra pin. Boudreaux is the only one on a mark right now. 
out of anyone. Buried! And all the pent-up frustration comes out in the 24th box. And... I'm sorry, what is that, Leaf? Folks, that is the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10... Yeah, garden variety. Now you gotta make it. He sliced it outside! And got six out of seven! <laughs> this ain't nine pin barber, but that was a great shot. Never forget how Sean Baker raked in that. <laughs> Take a look at the full score. Sean Baker. That's not bad. Only slightly more normal 5, 9, 10, I suppose. One, seven, nine for Zappy. All scores confirmed. Baker hated it, but got it. Now this head pit's going to tip for Zappy, but nothing's near the seven. These teams entered second and third within one match point of each other in the standings. Of course, I sit here in Holbrook like the rest of them, not aware of how everyone else is doing. But right now, as the standings shake out, Academy 2, of course, is running away right now, 24 match points ahead of Woburn 1. And then Central 1 is 41 match points back, so it's 0, 24, 25, and then 41 games back for the top four teams. Rounding out the playoff picture, Woburn 2, Sunnyside, Central 2, and Metro with Riverwalk 10 games, 10 match points out of the playoff picture, Lafayette, Academy 1, and Wakefield. Six. Baker's shown us how to make the horseman before. Today. Early release for Zappy, but the pins mix. One, five, ten. It's also a strange one. Baker almost ran it down. Not the sort of ball to do it with. There's a huge wood pile back there. Zappy got the head pin. Nothing carried right. was a rig they could have needed. Nice 10 for Baker. And 9 for Zappi. Jeff Surratt and Chris Jones. Buried. Surrett strikes. Good shooting, buddy. Second strike of this string and the match. Three down for Jones. Trying to curl that in there. It washes out pins. Seven. Wood drives out the nine pin, and that's eight. Encouragement being shouted by both teams. He's he Woburn one building an advantage here as well. Two one field marks to one. 
Surratt. Buried. All dropping on the strike. Is he going to get a double this way? Oh, my. <laughs> My commentary is a bit too audible, and Craig said, no, of course he isn't. Gone. Spare on strike. Fourth mark of the string, and it's been strike, spare, and spare, strike. Spare, strike, strike, spare, excuse me. The string is a tongue twister, and it's 27 over par for Surratt. There's 10 off the wall. Jones having to fight for every pin, but has only lost five of them in the six boxes. Boudreaux is on four marks in a row. 20, 19, 19, and an unfilled spare. <laughs> Butcher got the head pin. A little thin this time, I suppose. Easy to nitpick when you're going this good. That's six. Holbrook's got it in the head pin. Three pins wobbling, but it isn't going to drop. And the wood gets out of the way. That's off the wall and gone. A five mark first half. And a spare for Holbrook. Holbrook's 10th mark. Sean Baker also had five marks to start the first string. Now Boudreaux has five marks to start the third. Here comes. And a head pin miss. An 89 half for Boudreaux. It's the new math. Outpost lead for Holbrook. He's got five on the spare fill. I can solve it. I can solve it my way. I can solve it my way. That's off the wall. Nope, Boudreaux will not get a mark this time. Total for Jonathan Boudreau is 370 right now, and he has four boxes remaining. Pelletier on the head pin, triangle number two. Harris awaiting pins on seven. Palantir's got eight marks and Harris is ten. Harris buried! Six pin. Triangle goes. Triangles are going with some regularity. That's been a penchant of a lot of bowlers tonight. Palantir picks one up here. Single pin. Yes. Chris Harris and Jeff Surratt on the opposite teams, both on course for 360 right now. Pelletier dumps nine on the spare. Harris also on the spare, five. No. 
Military. Nope, backwood won't go. Not frozen. Still a monster advantage for Wuburn 1 again. Harris needs to get something going here, and it's next to impossible to do against this. There's the 10. Slice the pins, that's a good nine. Now Winchell on the strike. Winchell always takes the long drive in from New Hampshire to be here in Holbrook, Massachusetts. Unloaded in the 24th box. Dave Barber first. One, three, nine, ten. Now on a strike. Yep, head pin. Oh, boy. This three and two is my favorite bad leave. It's pretty when it goes. Now that... Hmm. Got jammed up on pins in the middle there. Winchell still filling the strike. Add two more, that's seven. Put that on the board. Now with some pins to pick up against Barber's 10. Winchell gets nine. Good pinning throughout. Barber buried it in there. Yes, the four pin will drop. Mitchell takes aim. Only the slightest bit thin in the pocket. 2-4. Barber picks it up. Barber's had 10 marks. Two four. I'm throwing. I'm afraid. And nine. There you see it, folks. If everyone pinned out, the triples would end up at Baker 349, Surrent 360, Boudreaux 410, Pelletier 4, 341, Barber 340, and Zappi 351, Jones 308, Holbrook 349, Harris 364, and Winchell 327. If everyone, say, got 10s from here on out. And wasted their bonus balls. Zappy pins continue to fall. No backdoor strike. But one three. What are you betting the game? Baker's also got a decent leaf. Found anything we can. It's the four horsemen. Baker thought he had it in there. Nothing worse than nine for Zappi. Baker takes out 10. Zappi has that one extra mark. That's why he's got 10 pins in hand there. Overall, the margin lopsidedly in Woburn's favor. But still a big question of where the final scores will be. Whenever the scores balloon out of hand like this. One, three, seven, eight. Triangle number four down. Oh, 
Ooh, Zappy got three out of four. Seven pin drops! <laughs> Six ten. <laughs> it's a good bounce back ball by Baker. <laughs> and a nine. <laughs> Two open marks in Woburn side, and one open mark for Union Street. Saret and Jones. Saret's <laughs> having a really good string right now. 27 over par and a spare working, so chance to crack into the 130s. Jones. Head pin. Sheesh. 4, 6, 7, 10. Saret's on a spare. That's six. It does break 130s territory. Jones trying to cut pins over. They're parallel, so not much doing. Do the Caps bridge the three and the four? Yes, they do! And Surrett shows you how to do it. Three marks in a row, five in the string. Quality 10 for Jones. Object, object, object. <laughs> Surrat is not out of the 400 picture either, but he needs a lot. He would need to mark out essentially. Spread eagle for Jones. Another head pin hit, not rewarded. Surrett. How about the 10 pin? Tasma will not go, but there is a wood pile in front. Jones trying to get something going. That's not bad. Seven down, three to go. If Surrett got all 19 boxes, he would have 400. No. <laughs> Baker just teased Surrett. Get the 10, buddy. Surrett's been. That's a great 10 again by Jones. Object, object, object. Surrett cannot get a 10 box here, even though he's bowling fantastically. Uh. That's the wrong score for Jones. This is correct. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. Jonathan Boudreaux has 370 pins down as I speak. Four boxes to go. Holbrook, whoops, that's one. He just lost this over to the right. You don't have 400 until you knock down 400. Holbrook buried it in there and bounces back for the spare. Boudreaux not bad at all, it's great. Matching, matching spares. For the powerhouses in slot number three. Greg Holbrook will be able to crack into 350s here with a any count at all, actually. Be on pace for that, I mean to say. Edmund hits good, yep, he'll get it. Nine pins, plank in front of the 10 pin. Holbrook could get a great count here. There it is. Boudreaux's going to have to work for these pins. Excuse me. Yes. 
I really want these pins, did not get it. So a little bit of something to think about, but still. He has 387 in two boxes to go. This is gonna be okay, folks. Holbrook got the spare, we got that. Holbrook's on pace for a 120 plus string. Eric Pelletier and Chris Harris. Carves that four, DC special. Skipper off the foul line. Four pins down, one, three, five, seven, nine, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten, excuse me. Just by the head pin. Excuse me. Nine down, one to get. Nice ten. All right, come on, go get one here. Right, right here. Magic 10 for Pelletier. Pennings within two. Fifty-six marks to forty-four in Wuburn One's favor. Harris got it all. Strike. His third. Else here almost responded. Yes. Hold your breath, but that's a spare. Barber and Winchell. Dave Barber is working on his 10th mark. John Winchell has been pitting better than a in a box. Pin lost per box, better than that. Not a lot of marks to show for it though. That's great. Eight pin stands. Ooh. Two and Barbara will have 64 through six. No. Just hasn't found the range here. Can pick up a lot of pins here, though. Gets it. A nine. And picks up two in the process. Six. It's not the most convincing wood in the world, but it is horizontal. It's definitely usable. And it spins out. While we're back on the half western second ball. Ten versus eight. <laughs> See the scores here. I'll just confirm it at the end. It's probably simpler that way. See all the marks still working.
Holbrook well, confirms the string margin, 40 pins, so we have it right here on screen. John Baker's going to break here, or maybe. 1-9. Woods angled funny. Zappy on a spare fill. Three. Gone. Spare for Baker, his second of the string. This is one, four, seven, eight, ten. He's happy to pin out. On the head pin, just full, apparently. It'll be seven. So a 13 then a seven makes the 20 for the pair. Baker's bonus through the middle, three. Oh dear. Sliced it over, six tips. Toughest to get that front pin. One eight. There's 10. Baker finishes with 102 and a 351. And Zappy's nine brings him up to 349. Jeff Serrett is currently able to pin out 372 right now. against Chris Jones. Hasn't had it marked yet, but pinning well. One, two, seven, ten for Surrett. Jones trying to angle that there in the worst way. Four horsemen, nine, ten. Bad. Tips the headpin anyway. Two out of three, not bad. So, nine for Surrett. And nine for Jones. <laughs> Jeff Surrett now has one last chance to get a 10 box. He actually has one already. He had one in the first string 10th box. That's it. There it is. All right. Two and two. That is that leave is ripe for a 10 box, if I may say so myself. Jones, their first look at a hay bale, Starlight 5, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10. Jones accurate again. The check mark was made, but the nine pin is there. Sarek gets an eight. Three hundred sixty-nine. Jones nine. Finishes with three hundred six. All right, last probably major question. Well, we've seen 43 pin margins disappear, though. We've seen the trajectory this match has gone. Joe's got nine. He's got 387 already. And that's in pins down, so 400 is highly probable. Holbrook's got a triangle. Chance for his 13th mark. That's gone. Hmm. Boudreaux gets his 7th mark of the string. 
He has had 15, arguably 17 in all. If you count his double strikes twice. Seven mark ten box. Seven fill ten box, I should say, from Holbrook. And the 400 is complete for Jonathan Boudreau. Six down and 130 in the ninth. Oh boy. He made the 2 4 10 out of that. Holbrook's try. Left a bundle of five. And a nine on the end, 139 string, and a triple of 412. Holbrook ends with six for a 124 string, his triple 361. Chris Harris probable will be the highest scorer on Union Street Lanes. Wants another. All right. Picking up pins again. Pelletier's three fill. Pelletier's made a few bounce back shots, but not this time. This wood is not, I don't think it's fully sat against the lip of the plate, so. I think this is a disastrous angle here. Harris plays right side of the wood and finds a way. Spare on strike. Against the seven. Eric Pelletier, two five. Sends it off the wall. That's all on the spare. Only very well. Pelletier converts his fourth mark of the string. Send it off the wall. It won't even make it to the seven. No, it will make the seven. What a great shot that was, but it won't make the mark. Now he has to wait for it to stop rolling with only one pin left to get. That's how the pin should have flattened on that last shot. Show us another front lip shot. Ah, not this time. Nine box. 120 for a triple of 379. Last ball, Pelletier. Punches through. 343. Could have been a lot more with all those marks, but great triple nonetheless. That's too bad. They're going to do away with that baseball spot. Average spare fill of 5.6. Dave Barber and John Winchell. to close us out. Here's Barber, another punch out. Winchell's got the Kaleri leave. Good second ball. Oh, close, yes! And it goes for the first time today. He is the 
we're caving it all in, nine down. Winchell on his mark, seven. Kind of split, but not the most devious one ever. Dave off the wood and spared. Winchell makes a shot. Back to back. A great finish. So it is now confirmed Woburn has won the remaining four match points and it will be eight to nothing. We'll put that there up for you. And we'll confirm the final scores before we go out. Final ball. Barbara gets six. And my count 103 and a 341. Winchell blows out seven, six, as I said. And there it is, time for handshakes. See the final string scores on your screen. I'll photograph everything else. I didn't get to see a lot of it. I heard a lot of it. <laughs> Okay, folks, so we had 109, 93, 124, 120, 122 is confirmed. We'll take that spare smudge away. And finally, we had 109. Uh, nope, I didn't get the other score. Excuse me. Pretty sure it was me. He's got to go somewhere. <laughs> 102, 136, 139, 111, 103. And there we go, folks. There you see the final triples on your screen. There you see the final results. And all that remains to say. You can pause the video, of course, if you want a better look at these triples, but let's sign off here. My name is Greg Guyar, and on behalf of everyone here at Candlepin Bowling Network, thank you so much for watching this presentation of the Friday Night Pro League. And until very, very soon, so long for now.